trying another real quick and fun hopper pattern today. This is called Mr. Peanut. I don't know much of the history of this fly or how long it's been around. I've been aware of it for a while. It's just a fun little hopper pattern. Foam hopper patterns are really, really nice because they tend to float right in the surface film. They never get saturated in sink. They're very, very durable and they're often very quick to tie. And the Mr. Peanut is no exception. Plus, as you can see, you can use bright colored foam, different configurations of colors and things like that, as well as even different wings if you want. This is a deer hair, but if you wanted to use some body hair that was fluorescent or you know bright yellow or something like that, you could do that as well. But it's just a fun, interesting, quick little hopper pattern. That's Mr. Peanut. I'll get started tying. starting Mr. Peanut with my hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 9672, a 3x long hook. I like my crawdad, or not crawdad, I like my hopper patterns to be just a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook on this. I'm going to attach my thread and for thread on this one I'm using a 140 denier in black. This is a UTC ultra thread. The body on this is going to be just a light, kind of a violet color and a dark purple. So I'm just going to use the black. I suppose if you had a, a purple colored thread, it might go with it a little bit better. I think the black looks just fine. I want a little bit heavier thread because that's two layers of closed cell foam that I have to bind in. I used a 70 denier or something like that, um, say a Danville 6 odd. I'd probably break it. Also, I could easily cut through that foam. So I'm going to get my thread, thread base down here, my thread at the end of the shank. I have taken this foam. Apparently, you can buy 2 mil foam that's glued together like this, either in strips or in sheets that you can cut up. I have haven't really looked, but I have never really seen them around. I glue my own together. I just get some spray adhesive. You can buy this foam at a craft shop, spray both sides, let it set, get tacky, stick it together, flatten it out, and you've got you know, your multicolored strips. I use a paper cutter to then turn around and cut these, and I want these about the width of the uh, gap of the hook. You can do these in all kinds of different colors if you want. It's up to you. I'm going to take the very end of it here and I'm just going to cut the corners off a little bit. You could round those off if you want to. I imagine you could even, when I did the mini flopper, I used the Chernobyl ant cutters from River Road Creations to make the body on that. You could make a couple of those and then use some zapping gap or something and glue them together if you want a more rounded end to it. It's up to you. So I'm going to attach this with the tip hanging off the bend of the hook, maybe about a quarter of a shank. I'm going to bring my thread around here, one or two wraps, slowly cinching that down, and then a couple of nice tight wraps to cinch that in. Now to help that from rotating around on the hook shank, I'm going to use some CA glue, Zappa Gap, uh, super glue is what they call it. I'm using some Gorilla Glue here. This one has a nice brush applicator with it. Actually, hold on, I'm not going to put that on right at the moment. I put on, that on after I get the body on. So I'm going to advance my thread forward and I'm going to then keep wrapping that body in in about three even segments. If I put that onto the thread now, 
I end up smearing it onto my fingers a lot more, and that's why I don't do that. This last wrap is go not going to be quite up to the eye of the hook. I'm just shy of the eye of the hook, maybe half an eye length. Wrap that in. If these aren't all evenly spaced, I don't think it's the end of the world. Now, this is when I'm going to take my CA glue and I'm just going to lightly coat these thread wraps and the underside with some CA glue. And that will bind that in real well and keep that from rotating around. You do have to be careful because you still, if you're not careful, can end up squeezing the sides here and getting CA on your fingers. Now we're going to tie in our hair. You could use an elk hair if you want. I'm using some deer hair. I already have mine stacked. So you don't have to listen to me pound on the desk. And it doesn't have to be a real thick clump for this. I'm going to tie this in so the tips are not quite to the, the very back. So I'm going to see where my tie-in spot is, which is right off my fingers of my right hand. Transfer this to my left, and then I know I'm going to actually cut just a little past the tie-in spot. That gives me some hairs here that I can put up and pull these down as an anchor like that. If you have a hair or two pop out from under the thread wraps, don't be concerned about it. Get those tied in real nice. Now we're going to take this foam here and we're going to fold it back on top of the hair that we just put on. But we want the end of this to extend maybe about half an eye to an eye length past the eye of the hook. So we're using that foam doubled over here to make a little bit of a head, what we're doing like that. Then I'm going to trim this excess foam short. I'm going to tie in some legs and our Mr. Peanuts done. For legs on this, I'm using some kind of a fluorescent pink legs. This is obviously a very bright fly. You can, hopper patterns are one of those things, especially the foam, that you can do in all kinds of interesting color combinations and, and configurations. And you'd be surprised um, some of the colors that I've seen that, that work out there. And this is one of them. The fish don't see the colors the same way we see the colors. So for some reason, this purple stuff and bright pink works. Now, it's up to you how you tie your legs in, but the Mr. Peanut has a knot tied in the back. I'm going to take, these are probably about twice the body length, maybe a little bit longer. You can trim them back, always, always uh, better to be a little long. And I'm just going to tie a little bit of an overhand knot in these. I can do this on camera. Once I get that knot started, what I want to do is make certain I'm pulling that down and it's about the third of the, of the way the length here. Once you have it in place, just pull that tight. I'm going to do that to the second. I have two rubber legs here and I did not split these simply because it is much easier to do this knot and all of this with those legs together. Again, getting that about a third of the way down those rubber legs and then just pull that tight. I'm going to tie this in so that that knot is right at the very back of the body. When I do it this way, it gives me the front about the length that I want. There's a little bit less trimming for me. Again, putting that knot right at the end of the body. I'll bind those in. Now, at this point, it's up to you. You can start trimming your legs and, and massaging those if you want. I generally don't. I'm going to put in a four or five turn whip finish. And 
and that is moving a little on the hook shank, but we're going to fix that in just a second. The front legs here, those are fine for me. If you want, you could trim those back a little bit. I'll separate these. The back legs here, you're going to separate these. And then if you have one of these that's on top here, you're going to trim that off. So you'll only have one past the knot. These legs are going to kind of do whatever they want to do. Once I have that in place, I'm going to cut those off just a little bit past the body. So the back legs here are just like little nubs. Now I'm going to saturate these thread wraps right up here with head cement. You could put a little more Zappa Gap on there if you want. I think I have enough. I'm just going to put a little bit of head cement in there. That will really soak down. And that will keep that front from spinning around. One thing I do want to point out here is I had mentioned that when we advanced our thread back forward, we were still about a half an eye length, maybe even a full eye length behind the eye of the hook. And the reason for that is this right here. If we were right up against that hook, it would be much harder to push this foam back to then get this fly on your leader. So that's part of the reason you're a little further back and we roll that foam out so that that head extends maybe an eye length or so past the eye of the hook. Gives us a nice large head, but it's also very easy to tie on to our tippet. So there you go. That is the Mr. Peanut, another quick and fun little fly. You can cut some of these strips up Ahead of time, you can even cut these into strips and then glue those strips together to get a double tone. But there's all kinds of different color combinations you can do with this. And it's a very, very quick hopper pattern. That is the Mr. Peanut. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.